There is no jamming in this video. Hello, Dolly. Uh, this is a little bit meta. Um, I'm just documenting my process. I think some folks might find this interesting or useful, and uh, I'm very interested in feedback because, uh, at least personally, this is uncharted territory. Um, I'm taking my Dollis stuff, and I am trying to put on a live show uh, with a friend who is... Uh, uh, musically, you could think of him as, you know, he, he sings and plays songs, he plays an instrument, he plays banjo, which is very interesting and a little unusual. Um, but as far as um, the technology and how you wire it up and routing signal and even the act of making and playing songs, you know, it, it, think of it as a dude and a guitar, technically. But, you know, it's a banjo, it's fucking awesome. But anyway, so we're, we're, we're putting together a show and... and songs that's different from from just jamming by yourself uh, i feel like by myself with a little bit of prep i could go on and on and on all day long but when you're trying to do a list of songs man that's different um and so i've, I've figuring things out as i go i'm making lots of mistakes um, but i think i found kind of a good sweet spot here um that's gonna work and i'm, I'm just sharing the process here so yeah if this doesn't interest you by all means click away not gonna hurt my feelings um got the circuit mono station this is that plus the pocket operator rhythm here i think approximately this thing is going to be doing just kick drum um and we're going to be saving bass lines on here because i've got lots of slots i can save sessions to so that's a good place because we've really got to plan the sets so i'm going to have songs in order on here i've got clock from the mono station uh, I've got a splitter, so the clock for the mono station is going in here. For now, I've got the, the audio of the mono station also coming in the pocket operator, which is convenient, and it's going to be one audio feed out of here, um, which also means this case can come off of <laughs> this whole easel thing right here. I'm trying to keep things modular and portable, uh, etc. So, you know, if I want to, I can jam with just this. Uh, just the mono station and the uh, the pocket operator. That's a good time. So this can come separate. I've got to rig something for the top here so it stays open right now. I just got tape for right now. Um, so I've got session saved here. You know, lots of patterns, cool variations. This machine is a beast. I can improvise on it as well. Um, for monitoring purposes, I'm noticing the banjo is freaking loud. It's, it's important to keep that thump here. So tentatively, this thing may be here just for kick. Uh, but I know this machine really well. I can spice things up, add the snare and the hats, and I, you know the effects. It's a fun little thing. It's very versatile. It kind of it doesn't do much, but it does it really well. And and you can get a lot out of it once you uh, once you go and get very familiar. Anyway, so we got this, and that's the heart. Uh, and then depending on the songs, I think I'm crafting little bits here. Don't let you are in the way. Uh, but anyway, I can run. I'm thinking. This is gonna run into this mixer here. This is the one thing that plugs in actually with a power cable. Everything else runs on batteries. Conceivably, this could be replaced with something else, but I've got this and I don't have money to buy something better. So it's that. And I'm also working with this. I'm not sure exactly. I'm just, I'm giving myself options right now. So this one is battery powered. It can be two, excuse me, four stereo channels or eight mono channels. Um, configurable. I think I might even be able to use this as if I wanted to, a, a, like a monitor feed, if I want to send, if I send them up here separately, I can maybe send a monitor mix that's just the kick drum and or this guy here with the bass, which might be good for performances. Um, but yeah, if it's just me, I can play with this by myself. Uh, it's going to come into here. Uh, and this so something in here is going to bring all the elements in. So I've got another whole station, which again, this could work by itself. I have jammed with this. It's self-contained following the Ricky Tynes adage, of course, uh, depending on how you look at it. I've got my drum machines. I've got my synths. I've got samplers, everything I need right here. And of course the Volca sample can save up to 10 slots. Um, so conceivably that's 10 songs. 10 things in the set that's uh, already ready to go. Um, but I'm also thinking kind of as a hack, and I got, you know, I have to take notes and do things very carefully, but if I've got 10 voices, say, you know, 10 patterns total, you can have 10 voices per pattern, uh, polyphony of nine because of the choke group, but if I only use five sounds, 
and I mute the other five, then I can squeeze 20 songs, or, you know, 20 pieces or 20 parts at least, um, out of the 10 that are on here. Uh, so that's something I've got to think about a bit. Um, I love my pocket operator samplers, PO33 and the PO133. I hate that they've got different names because functionally they are identical. Um, other than uh, resetting them, actually, oddly enough, I don't know why that is. If you do a factory reset on the Street Fighter, it takes a couple minutes, um, whereas on the original KO, it is instantaneous. Um, and, you know, most of the time that doesn't matter. Uh, it, actually, the way I'm looking at these things, it kind of does, because I'm looking at... Ideally, I want to make longer sets, man. I'm really, I'm really stoked about trying to put on a very compelling live show... Um, eventually a pretty long one and or one that can change a lot with only two people, uh, with myself and my buddy Ben here. I think the, the mix of his banjo and singing, he's a great songwriter, uh, and he's got interesting taste in cover songs, you know, just clashes with my taste in a great way. Um, I, but so we're putting stuff together. I can't arbitrarily change, uh, the pitches on these, you know, you can sample whatever into it, but that's a process. I don't want to do that on stage. But you can save to these, you know, you can do the, uh, basically back up the entire state of the device over audio. It takes a couple minutes, but you can do it. So I want to have a handful of these and just plan it accordingly. But then you, you're getting really interesting here between having stuff saved on the sample and the mono station, being able to bring in whatever sample or uh, whatever PO33 that's ready to go. And then I'm kind of just improvising with the Volca sample uh, doing whatever with these drums, you know, I can sequence drums on and off on the fly, especially once you got different devices, man, you know, you just mute them, whatever, man, we're going to fucking go nuts and it's going to be cool. Um, but yeah, there's, once you start multiplying devices, there's so many different ways to do it. So the heart, the brain is here, the thump and the bass, put the audio into here. Separately from all that, I'm setting up songs on here, having the things saved the right way on this guy, bringing in the right pocket operator with the right configuration. And as we go down the set list, you know, just make sure I'm on the right session on here, right patterns on here, right device in here. I'm gonna have checklists like a freaking pilot. Uh, and then bam, we press play. Once all the parts are moving though, you know, I, I know the pocket operators and such well enough. I can jam, y'all know I can jam. So, uh, that's how we get through those songs there. And then separately, also, I'm gonna have these other little mini rigs. These are from frickin' Dollar Tree. Uh, they're like three bucks. It's very lightweight, very convenient size to just stick a few pocket operators in. Um, and I'm <laughs> to upgrade the collection, man. I've got, I have two of the rhythm, but one, this one works, but it has a cracked screen. Um, I can deal with it jamming at home, but it, it you know, not knowing the sync settings, Thank you, Dolly. Not knowing those settings when you're live on stage, um, I have found out firsthand can be a real hassle. I, I am taking this up to the open mics and working with my friend Ben in open mics, and uh, we are we are flailing, and it, it's it's great. <laughs> we're having a blast, and it's got moments where it's fantastic. But we're you know we're learning. It's it's this is uncharted territory, man. I freaking love it. Um, so and the PO33, I've got three of these. However, Dolly, please don't eat the styrofoam. Bro, this is this is why I have a lid. Oh my god, can't I can't do anything. Bro, bro. I love you, but you got cheesy crazy hint. Yeah. This is temporary. <laughs> okay, um So I've got this one that works, but the screen is screwed. So, you know, not being able to know where the pitch knob is centered and Works for at home, not so much on stage. Um, I got this one, the uh, works fine, except the knobs are bad, uh, which even at home makes it practically useless. But fortunately, I have a friend who has solder skills and he thinks he can swap these, you know, make one dolly, I love you, but lordy, uh, <laughs> uh, thinks he can give me one good one out of the two of these. And he bought a PO33 just for grins that he doesn't really use. So. Uh, he's going to let me add that to the collection here as we're putting stuff together. So, um, you know, these are three bucks, man. I, they're not quite the right height, but it's very convenient with a minimal construction. I'm going to put one or more. And again, I got you got to follow the Ricky Tynes. You need a drum machine. You need a synth. You need a sampler. If you got those three, you, you ought to be able to put together something. 
Um, so even right now without, I got double duty on this. I'm tempted to put this one in here, but I, I want to be able to see it, you know? Um, so I'm very tempted to buy another one of these. I just, I, I, I love it, man. It's, it's useful. But anyway, drum machine. Synth, one of the two or both. Um, and then a sampler, right? You got a drum machine synth sampler. Let's make some stuff. So um, I want to put some of these boxes together, you know, a little, little, little bit of construction, some Velcro or some hinges, um, and then even get the, the stuff uh, that lets you replace the batteries with the, uh, you know, instead of double A's or triple A's, you power it with a little, it, little dongle goes in, you plug it into a USB bank, man. Stick it under here. It's just always in. I get a handful of these, like everything's on batteries except this. You know, if I need one outlet, that's fine. But again, and I'm making modules here, right? So I'm putting a set together and I'm planning that. But if I want to sit, set this up and just plug in my speaker and just jam out on a couple pocket operators, I can do that. If I want to grab the briefcase and just, I got one synth in a drum machine, I can make a banger with that, no problem. Let's go, grab that case, you know? Um, this is gonna fit in. This is just for complimenting stuff live. It's almost literally a toy. Um, but it can play notes, it can do scales, it's got a handful of sounds. This sounds nice through the uh, NTS-1 and or the Monotron. Uh, I wanna play with distortion pedals and stuff, so that's another aspect. And again, I'm thinking in modules that go into the mixer here. Um, so the brain, the foundation, put songs together, put songs together, add the spice, you know, I can play guitar a little bit too. So it, it, I'm, I'm, I'm figuring it out, but man, I am so freaking excited. And um, if you're the kind of person that sat through all this, like, thanks, that's that's flattering that <laughs> someone cares enough. Um, and, but please, it, I'm learning, I'm, I want advice. If you have done anything like that, you know, whether it's taking these portable things live, I would love to know what you've learned in that process. Um, you know, there's nothing that drives a lesson home <laughs> harder than failing in public. Uh, and I, I'm, it's very hard to embarrass me at this point. I'm just, I'm very comfortable as a person and I'm just having fun and I'm trying to work on my craft and I take my craft seriously, but I don't take myself seriously. You know, this is, I'm just having fun. We're making music. Um, and, but then also, yeah, taking this live. And if you have experience, um, transitioning from stuff where you've been working by yourself for a long time and you're confident in your use of your tools, but now you are, you're bringing that into a more traditional songwriting environment for lack of a better term. Uh, and what are the, you know, just interesting stories and, and things you've learned that helped smooth that process out. Cause I gotta tell you, man, I've been playing with Ben on and off for 20 years. We know each other really well. I've learned a lot from him musically. We've played live together. We've recorded together. Uh, and this, this is tough. It's fun, but it, it's, it's really frustrating at times. It's just, we're speaking different languages in so many ways. Um, but I, I really like the results. Dolly, you are <laughs> anyway. Uh, I think I've gone on heck and heck long enough. Um, I'll see y'all later. Uh, more jams coming. Bye-bye.